This clip will center on the four mirror lens. The prototype four mirror lens, the Zeiss lens, is no longer produced. So this clip will be about the Posner lens, the Volk G lens, Sussman lenses, and similar lenses. In the four mirror lenses, all four mirrors point towards the iridocorneal angle. There are no mirrors that are designed to look at the peripheral retina. These lenses have a small area of contact. You can see cornea around the lens when it's being used, and they have a relatively flat area of contact. The advantage of this lens is that it does not require any methyl cellulose as a coupling solution, so that it is very fast to do gonioscopy once one becomes skilled. Also, there is no methyl cellulose to degrade subsequent perimetry or photography. I believe that this is the best lens for routine use. It is the most difficult lens to master, but it is worth learning to master this lens. Additionally, this lens can be used for indentation gonioscopy, a very valuable tool that is discussed in the section on techniques for difficult angles. This lens is held between the thumb and index finger. The remaining fingers are used to brace the hand against the patient's cheek. This will steady the hand and allow the examiner to keep up with any small patient movements. The lens is held lightly and this is one of the hardest aspects of this kind of a lens. When I perform gonioscopy with a four mirror lens, there's constantly air darting in and out underneath the lens, letting me know that I'm not pushing too hard. If I'm pushing too hard, I will artificially open the angle, as in indentation gonioscopy. Certainly one should not see corneal folds during gonioscopy unless one is intentionally indenting the eye. The lens is held square to the eye. This is the most comfortable position for the patient. If the lens is held in a diamond-like configuration, the edges of the lens are uncomfortable against the patient's lids. I always begin by looking in the superior mirror. This provides a view of the inferior iridocorneal angle, which is the deepest and the most pigmented part of the iridocorneal angle. The pigment helps to define the angle structures and allows one to become oriented to this particular patient's anatomy. The upper and lower mirrors are also the easiest to use to identify the corneal wedge, which is discussed in the section on difficult angles. One can then look in each of the four mirrors in turn, noting any abnormalities and recording them, remembering that the view is a mirror image. There are small portions of the angle that are missed by holding the lens still and looking in only the four mirrors. One can see these other small portions of the angle simply by rotating the lens a few degrees and re-looking in the four mirrors. Tall clinicians might find the handle of the Zeiss or Posner lens to be awkward. The Sussman lens might be a good alternative because it does not have a handle. The Sussman lens is an excellent lens, but I find that the long barrel makes it difficult for me to offset the light source from my oculars. For tall clinicians, it is a wonderful lens.